Hello, uh, in this video we'll go through the basic steps uh, for setting up cameras and exporting the two or three massing perspective views that you are asked to place as part of your panel B. Okay, so let's get started. Um, just to give you an overview, I have here under the 3D views saved the different uh, visuals that uh, you will be included uh, in your panel too. So we have here uh, one possibility of an axonometric section an exploded analysis of parts and four different solar analyses for different seasons. Great, so we'll go back now to the uh, 3D view, that's the general view. And as you guys can remember, under the view family, you have the, uh, the view option, but this is a split button. You guys remember the split buttons in Revit that you can uh, extend and you have um, more options. So we will be working now with the camera option. I always recommend that you place cameras through your plan, uh, through your floor plans. Uh, it really matters if you're placing a camera in level one or level two, because the camera will be placed in different heights. So level two obviously will be higher uh, position for the camera than, than level one. Okay, so for now I'm under layer level one, excuse me, and I will go under my camera uh, you can also access the camera from the quick uh, toolbar, quick menu. So here you have it, camera. And I will. Um, the way it works is that you click first and you create the camera and then you click a second time where you place the actual target of the camera. Be careful with that because if you place the target very close to the camera, uh, you can see here that the actual range of view is very, very uh, small. So you will end up with views that they have a very weird white plane. Uh, let's give an example. Let's say that this is my target, very close to the actual camera. And this is now the new camera I created. And here I am within the camera, within the view that I saved. And I can always, of course, uh, increase the frame of what this camera uh, looks into. And unfortunately, I cannot really see much uh, here I know I have a wall that uh, hides whatever is be behind it, but I don't know if you guys can see all the way here in front, I have a white plane that doesn't allow me to see my staircase. I do know that here I don't have a wall, I never really designed a wall. So already you have to be suspicious that this white plane that appears is because uh, the actual target of your camera is placed very, very close to the camera itself. So we'll go ahead and delete this new view that is um, automatically placed here for me. So delete that. Back to level one and back to the camera. And this time I will uh, place a camera here and then I will go very far away from my target. And of course I will increase, as you can see here, uh, the, the range of view, okay? The angle between those two lines is much, much bigger. Okay, so... And here, of course, I get a very bad, um, much better resolution of my interior space. I can see, indeed, uh, the different staircases, and I can even see the depth of my space. Okay, so I think that's, that's a good base for me to start working with. I can expand this frame as much as I want. Uh, you can already start thinking now about um, landscape versus portrait versus square images that you may export from Revit and how uh, would you be placing those in the second panel of um, InDesign. Okay, so I will keep this frame for now. And the first thing I want to do is uh, why not experiment a little bit with the uh, different navigation buttons. So while you're within the camera, you can just bring this out. So now uh, this navigation tool moves together with your mouse. Uh, it could be tricky in the beginning. The, was the way it works is that uh, as soon as you highlight uh, one of those options, let's say the walk option, uh, you have to just stay within it, okay? So it's highlighted as green. And as soon as I clicked in here, using my mouse, I'm just now clicking and I'm moving towards the inside of my image. If this is too much, I can go back again. Again, I'm just clicking my mouse and I'm moving outside. I'm even outside of the actual space, no? Too much, so I will go again back inside because I really want an interior view. Uh, you can move up and down your camera. 
you can center the camera to the new frame that you set up. Here it is. You can orbit. So you can rotate accordingly. You can pan. Um, you can zoom, of course. The zoom and the walk uh, are pretty similar. And you, re you can rewind, which is something that I never use. Okay, uh, great. So as soon as you familiarize yourself with the buttons, just make sure that you don't uh, distort too much. It's one of those buttons, and specifically the walk button distorts a lot your space. Uh, so if you end up with a space that is not any more realistic, just very fast delete this view and create a new camera. Um, if you want to just move slightly the actual camera in the level one, you can always do it. So I can jump back to level one. Unfortunately, I don't see the camera right away. So what I will need to do is to go under the camera view, right click and say, show this camera to level one. Okay, so now this is my camera and this is the range of view. And I can always move my camera outside or more to the inside, uh, to the left or to the right. And obviously my view um, will be um, accordingly updated, right? Right now I'm very low. So um, it's a combination. You can work with the navigation tool and uh, change the camera or you can go back to the actual plan where you set the camera and change the position of the camera there. You can always see the camera in a 3D view, in an actual uh, 3D view. So if I go here and I say, show the camera, here is my camera and I can move the camera from the 3D. I don't uh, usually recommend that because it's very hard for you to understand the coordinates. Okay, back to my interior view, I will even rename the view. I will call it interior one. You guys are asked to uh, create uh, two to three massing perspectives. You may have two interior perspectives and one that is interior exterior. Uh, so you can set up your camera outside of the gallery space look to the inside in a very dramatic and perspective way. It's up to you to really experiment further. Okay to that. Nice. Uh, now I could even export that right away as a, as a drawing that has no shadow quality. Why not? But there are a few tweaks that you could do so you get a little bit more of uh, depth here. The first thing I want to do with my composition is to select this wall that seems um, to hide all of these curtain walls behind and make it transparent. So I will go to the visibility and graphics and I will go under my walls category and I will add transparency, slight transparency to all of the walls. Again, I don't want to exaggerate. I just need to give a little bit of depth. Nice. The second thing you could do from the visibility and graphics is to go uh, and add textures uh, as part of each of those uh, elements. I would recommend that you don't overdo it, do not exaggerate, do not add colors, just keep it uh, very simple and grayscale. Uh, but experiment. Okay, so building in graphics, let me go under the floors. And here I have possibility of having a pattern as part of my floor. So I can override the no pattern and I can come here and say, you know what, create a solid field that is uh, really light gray on or add a concrete pattern or add a cross um, cross grid uh, or any of those right uh, I will keep it simple with a solid fill and I will say this uh, light gray or a bit darker and I can change it later on and now as you can see all of my floors um, have this uh, gray tone nice Another trick uh, you could do is to go through the actual view properties to the graphic display options. And that's a, that's a rich menu that you can work your way around it. Um, a default setting that I always find uh, very fast, um, it gives a very fast and smooth gradient, is the so ambient shadows. So if we uh, um, open that and apply, Already you can see that here all the way to the back, you have a nice gradient happening. Also here in the staircase, if I go back to the visibility and graphics and get rid of this gray tone, uh, then I will get a little bit more of this gradient. I could even say cast shadows, and now I get a little bit of a harsh understanding of the shadows 
for the specific uh, default I have set under the lighting, okay? Uh, I can say uh, increase the exposure of this scene. Let me add more sun. And now I'm increasing the quality of the shadows. That's too dark, so you want to most probably decrease it even more. And let's see ambient light. It doesn't really change much. It really depends on the view. I um, um, I would say that you go towards the whitey um, aesthetic rather than a very dark and harsh aesthetic. And uh, you could have options of background, but let's keep it simple for now. Uh, but feel free to experiment further with uh, the solar by default. It here it's in the lighting, but you can always change the line uh, from top to right. Let's say that and apply calculates it didn't really change much let me go under the steel and let's say okay to that and we have a little bit of uh, a change down here okay nice so um, before you export you may even say uh, that you want to hide the crop frame from this view and let's go ahead under the application button and print this one let's uh, select it this is the interior Okay to that, let's not save it. And in the setup, again, same comment as the solar studies, make sure that the raster quality is under presentation because as soon as you add shadows in there or even a uh, pose, then this becomes more of a raster um, image. Fit to page, okay to that, okay. That's an image you get. I do think that is a little bit overexposed towards the side. Um, also, I think I would go back and rethink this very gray tone. Maybe it's better for me to have this texture of a concrete. Um, so there are a few things that after you export, you can always rethink. Let me close that. Uh, and let's set up another uh, camera that is perspective, but not interior. Again, you have three of those views, uh, so find the best shot for you. I'll go under level one. I uh, will select again a camera. And this time, maybe level two, let's go to a higher level and select the camera. And this time I will go from the outside to the inside. And let's expand the frame. And I have uh, a nice perspective view now, exterior perspective. I could even start hiding some of the walls. Let's hide this element so I can reveal a little bit more of the interior. And very fast, I will go under the graphic display options. I will test out the ambient shadows and see if this adds um, nice quality. I think it does. Uh, it worked nicely here. Again, these are not really renderings, uh, realistic renderings. These are just massing uh, perspectives, grayscale massive perspectives. And I can uh, experiment a little bit further with sun and shadows. Obviously, I have to turn on the shadows. So I can say cast the shadows and apply. And here I get a little bit of a better resolution inside. And I can make the shadows darker. Oops, excuse me, I make them lighter, darker, and obviously the view becomes uh, much more aggressive. So somewhere in the middle is the balance. Again, you can work uh, with uh, ambient light, so you can expose a little bit further your image. And of course with sun. More sun and more ambient light will uh, make the image um, less aggressive. And of course less shadows. Yeah, nice, sounds good. Um, Again, I will close that and I will export this. Excuse me, not export, I will print it. I could always export it as a JPEG file, uh, but um, I always like the quality of a PDF, even if it's rasterized, which in this case it will be because of the shadows. So select this one. I forgot to rename this view, so I will have to go back and say that this is my exterior um, perspective view. Let's say no set up this is in presentation so i'm good to go and let's see how it looks
obviously right now we're looking a uh, pdf from our screens and it could uh, render uh, nicely and smooth and very dreamy and whitey uh, but certainly when we print we make a print test we will realize if there are some flaws that we need to go back and fix uh, by let's say increasing the shadows values or decreasing the sun etc etc okay so i will leave it here thank you <laughs>